Hey everybody, Caleb here, and today I've got this banjo. This is a Flint Hill, or Flint Hill, yeah, Flint Hill banjo. Um, this is something probably really cheap. I'm not really sure what this is actually worth, but it's not a real expensive banjo. I'm just going to try to get it set up to play a little bit better. Um, so hopefully it, uh, you know, kind of plays. Um, I'm not uh, by any means a banjo expert. So this will be a lot of trying to remember all the things that you got to do to make these good. But it shouldn't be much. And then uh, we should be going. So the first thing I'm going to do is start loosening these strings. I'd really like to keep them because I don't have any uh, extra banjo strings around. So I'm going to real carefully bring these down. Now I already know this thing has problems with neck angle. It's really not got enough. And I need to lower them kind of incrementally so they all come down at the same time. Because of the way the pressure on the head works, they'll get too tight if I take one all the way down by itself. Go ahead and take that bridge out. There is a mark uh, where the bridge was. I don't know that it's going to be perfect at that location, but uh, it will work. Well, that's pretty loose anyways. I think I'm going to go ahead and flip this thing over and see if we can't take the back off of here. This is a very plain banjo, as you'll start to see here. Um, it does have a back on it, but it's not much to it. Take that off. All right, so now we're looking at this thing. I'm just trying to kind of get an idea what's going on here. I guess this part... This is the uh, the piece that the back screws onto. It seems to be totally independent from the actual bar itself. Which then looks like somebody's put some tape on there so that it uh, held in a little tighter. I find that a little bit funny. Um, so I'm going to need to put a little bit more angle on this neck, which means I'm going to have to pull this a little bit tighter at some point. Um, I just want to kind of take a look here and see what I'm working with. I'm going to have to re-familiarize myself with all this stuff anyway, so I think I'm going to need some wrenches for these nuts. And maybe something small enough that I can use to actually uh, work that. So I'll see what I can do there and uh, where we get. So I've been looking at this for a little bit, and what I'm going to basically have to do to increase the amount of angle I have here is loosen up this bolt down here, uh, loosen these two, which I've already started, and basically pull this bar that way. Um, I've started doing that. And all I gotta do now is loosen this up a little bit, because what I essentially want here is to take this this neck that sits like this, and add a little bit more of this to it. So that's loosening the top of the neck to allow it to pull out, and tightening at the the base, the heel, to pull it in. If I make sure this is all loose so it has room to move, then I should be able to just stick something in here and try and pull that a little bit tighter. Yeah, that is working. Um, so there's a little bit more of a gap there. I think you can see that's that pulling that back I'm almost tempted to get a piece of binding that's about the same color to put it in there to make sure that it wedges it back. These cheap banjos have this problem a lot where the neck angle just is not great. So it needs every bit of help it can get to get it good. And that may be what I do. So I'll go maybe look for a piece of binding that's matching this in color and maybe I'll slide that in there and see how it looks. So I was thinking about this, and before I get this all 
set up the right way. I wanted to polish some of the metal parts, so I'm going to have to take it apart some more. So basically, I got to go through here and loosen all these up. So I'm going to go ahead and get all these off of here, and then I can polish up some of these metal parts. Hopefully, it'll turn out pretty good. So I went through and polished up all of the um, metal parts that I could, all the hooks and the hoop and the pieces that I could get polished real easily. Um, and I've got this tensioned back up now. And you can probably tell I've actually slid in a little shim of binding right here. It blends in really well, actually. And once I get some tension to pull on that, it's really, you're not going to be able to tell once the strings are on. And that will help kind of wedge that neck back. Those cheaper banjos have a problem with neck angle. And sometimes you just have to do something like this to help get that angle back where it should be. Now, the next thing I think I'm going to do uh, while the strings are off, the uh, fretboard could use a little bit of work. The frets are very tarnished. And... I think the board is a little gritty. So I'm going to go through and polish and clean the board. Polish the frets and clean the board. And then we can get back to stringing this thing up. So I don't think there's any problems with level on this. They're just kind of dull. So I'm going to start off with some 600. And just... This really won't take much on the 600, but... I can also do the edges a little bit to make sure they're kind of rounded over so this is comfortable to play. That's about it for the 600. We'll hit some 1200 now. probably good for that. Now I'll grab the micro polishing pads and start doing those as soon as I remember where I put them. So we get these micro polishing pads out and I start going through those. All right, so that cleans the frets up real good. Now we're gonna clean up the fretboard itself and I'm gonna do that with a razor blade. And now it usually benefits me to kind of uh, angle the instrument towards me. And all I gotta do is take this straight razor blade and work across the frets. I'm going to start the other way. Center that back up looking good. I'm going to take a brush and just knock off any of that dust. And then we'll just oil that board real quick. And this thing will be playing better than it ever was. Or moreover, feeling better than it ever did. So I'll get a cloth and wipe off that excess. And then I think we're about ready to start putting this thing back together. See where we're at on neck angle. I can already tell that this is looking better. Uh, the string action is way down. Um, I have already gotten this up 
to tune or pretty close. Trying to tune in the little picture is kind of hard. Alright, so what I want to check real quick before we do string height is intonation, just to make sure that it's looking good. Help if the string would stay in tune. So it looks like that string's a little sharp. We'll check the other end, because I can really only move it as one piece. just a little bit sharp as well so sharp is meaning the string is too long so I need or the string is too short so I need to move the bridge back just a little bit we'll have to tune the whole thing again I think that's going to be it. So I think besides putting the uh, the back back on here, we're just about good. I'll check the action real quick just to see where it is at the 12th fret. The first fret looked fine before I got started, but the 12th fret was what was high. Um, it should be close to a guitar relatively. About 75 thousandths on the highest string. And then I would like to measure off of the actual D string, not the fifth G string. About 70 thousandths, so that's really good. Um, typically, you would want to see a banjo probably a little lower than guitar. Um, that's really good. I think this is set up way better than it was. I mean, the fact that I put in a wedge this big and it lowered it to that means that it was really too high. Um, I guess what I'll do is put the back on here, and then in some form or fashion, it'll get played. So I said I was done with this, but actually I'm not quite done with this. This uh, banjo actually has a couple of breaks along here, like the headstock had a little bit of a break. And it's been glued back, and it looks really solid, but it's not totally smooth. So I'm making a slightly controversial decision, and I'm going to basically just rub the whole thing down with some steel wool and not bother polishing it back out. It's not really what I'm looking for in a finish on this anyway. Um, so I've got some steel wool and I'm really just gonna kinda take the gloss out and smooth it out. Doing some final cleanup here. I got a little magnet to pick up any little fibers. And then I'll come over with a cloth and wipe the whole thing down. And that's removed like 
98% of the gloss. So it, it's just a little bit smoother and it's less likely to get sticky uh, as you run your hand on it. And that's what I was looking for. And it kind of smoothed out that area where the finish was cracked. You can see it there. That's looking good. So now I think finally we're actually ready to play this thing. Well, I've left this thing to sit around here for actually a couple of days now to make sure I had a good even tension on the uh, on the head. And I can feel it's nice and it's like kind of flat. I'm not going to say that it is flat because you can feel where the uh, the bridge pushes down on the head. But when it's not got even pull from all the uh, hooks or if like one's loose, you can kind of feel a little warp in the head and I don't have any of that. Um, and it's playing really good now. The action is really nice and low, and the bridge is still tall enough that we got some good downward pressure. Um, and by no means am I a banjo player, a good banjo player, or, you know, really competent at banjo playing, but I'll uh, do a little bit here so you can kind of hear how it sounds. I've got a little banjo to add to the collection now. It's uh, by no means a real nice banjo, but it's, uh, it's a banjo. I hope you enjoyed watching this little bit of a video, just getting this thing set up to actually play. Um, hopefully we'll maybe hear it in the future by maybe me playing banjo a little bit better. Uh, we'll have to see. So once again, thanks for watching, and I will see you later. Hey everybody, just want to let you all know I'm going to try to be live next Friday, March the 3rd, 2023. Uh, about the same time I was live last time, I'm sure I'll put the time on screen somewhere here. I've got this guild here that needs just a good setup, and I thought it'd be kind of neat to try to do it in a live format. So, hope to see you there.